Hey guys, how are you? So we're in the last stages of releasing Studio Web 4, which is a rewrite from scratch, to the broader public. It's actually being used now by students and I have some schools on there. And we are now working out the little, I wouldn't say bugs, some of them are bugs, but a lot of it is just little tweaks to the user interface, little tweaks to the uh, nomenclature, to the text, uh, make sure everything is clear. It has a lot more to do with usability tweaks than functionality tweaks, although there's a couple things here and there in that regard. And that's part of the lingering, long, drawn-out process of delivering an app. It's that last bit, which takes time where you're working on all those little things I just discussed. So it, uh, it's something you have to expect. So when you've got the major functionality in place for your SaaS, your software as a service, or your web app, or your app, expect to have to spend more time than you'd think working on those little tiny things that are not crucial. A good friend of mine works for a very large financial institution in uh, Canada, software development, and they, they do Java. The language is not relevant though. What's relevant is that they classify problems in the software from level one through four. One being critical, the software cannot be used until that bug is fixed. Two is not so critical, three and four, et cetera, et cetera. What you're gonna find if you've done your job properly. In the end stages of software development, when you're putting out an app, you're gonna have a lot of threes and fours to have to contend with as opposed to ones. The you know, ones are problems that should, you know, they do happen in production and in beta, at the beta level, especially in the alpha level. But the ones should be, by the time you're launching and you got beta users and stuff, you're hoping at that point that you got no ones. You don't want no ones. Uh, although we did run into a one uh, a couple of weeks ago, but it was easily fixed. So uh, people were asking me to talk about long-term application development, what those cycles like and so on. So for me, just to give you a quick roundup of what I do is when I see and identify a particular problem that I can solve with a piece of software, something I, some service that I could bring, first thing I do is I work on the screens. I work on the views as the nerds would say. So I work on the screens so that we can sort of determine what people are going to see. Your screen one, screen two, and I mock this up on paper at first because it's super quick. And then I'll mock it up quickly, uh, either it, with a drag and drop GUI thing in HTML. Again, because it's quick. In the old days, we used to do with Photoshop or Illustrator or something. Although it's just quicker today to just do it with web tools because they're so powerful nowadays. Uh, once I got all the screens in place so people can see exactly how the app whether it's a web app or a smartphone app, et cetera, how it's going to look and feel, then what you do, and it's not rough. You're not going to super UX and UI optimizations at this point, it's just to get a, an idea of what, what, what the gen general functionality is as expressed in the views. Uh, in the, at the end of the day, these days, people, when they interact with apps, they're looking at screens, right, in some form or another. Anyhow, once that is done, the next step for me is to go down to the database. Now, for me, I believe that most apps, I don't know what the percentage is, could be 90%, it could be 95%, who knows? Most apps are probably gonna be based on an SQL-based database, in other words, a relational database. I've talked about this in other videos, but so then I'll drop down there and I'll start designing the structure of the database and I use the views I just created as my basic guide, if you will. Now, at the same time, there's also business considerations uh, in terms of how the data is gonna be managed and manipulated based on the needs of your particular app that may not be directly expressed or dir directly or obviously seen in the views. So that's a consideration as well. So once I got my views done, once I got my database done, then what I do is I create that middle layer of code, whether it be with Java, Ruby, Python, PHP, JavaScript, whatever. Then I start creating that middle layer. And typically, if I'm doing production software, I'm gonna use some sort of framework. So PHP, I'm using Laravel, Python, Django, or Flask, Java Spring, Ruby, Rails. Nobody uses Rails anymore, so don't use Ruby. I'm just kidding, I'm just, just, just trolling the Ruby people. If Ruby makes sense for you, then use Ruby, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Node, Express. Whatever framework, whatever middle layer of code that you want to write, then you start writing that code. 
And essentially, for most apps, a big part of the job is just connecting the data being collected in the views, massaging that data with your middle layer code, and then storing in a database, and then grabbing that data, manipulate it out back into some view. And that's pretty much what apps do these days, most of the time, if you think about it. There are exceptions, like games and stuff, but generally speaking, that's pretty much what it comes down to. So yeah, to conclude, in the end stages, in the final stages, when you're at the late beta stages where Studio Web is now, where you have users, it's being deployed, uh, we're, we're, like, we've gone through a couple hundred little things uh, in terms of severity, most are three and four. We've had a few one or twos, in fact. We've had a few one or twos, but most of the severity is pretty low, level three, four. UX thing. Sometimes a four could be like, you know, should be an S at the end of that word. Uh, move the button over here or let's uh, level two. Let's have a dialog box appear here and here, not, you know, that kind of stuff. And that is the type of stuff really, it comes into play. It becomes obvious when you're actually using the app for real and people are giving you feedback and you're clicking through it. Now, of course, with experience, you can set up, uh, and as I do, I set up basic parameters in terms of how, generally speaking, you, UX should work and how, generally speaking, the UI should work, Word, how dialog boxes work, uh, uh, how things, uh, the, the type of response users get, you know. So I may tell uh, my developer, I say, breathing space, breathing space. I say that all the time to my developers, breathing space, breathing space. That means having space around elements in your page so that it doesn't feel cluttered. Uh, another thing I, uh, I talk about, I say, Ajax that, Ajax this, Ajax that. Uh, I like to have local loading of data through Ajax, which is a way to, anyway, I won't get into it here. But anyway, I do stuff like that. All right, that's it. This was a high level uh, near discussions about late stages in the development cycle of an application, of a web application. People are asking about that and uh, I delivered for you. I hope you found that useful and uh, I gotta go. Gonna go get a sub. This is a bad day for food. It means taste good, but then I'm gonna have to fast for 24 hours to get rid of it. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye.